Obama, the Muslim baby crybaby president, who just because he can't stay president anymore is going to cause thermonuclear war and literally kill millions of people. You don't think so? He's not going to let Donald Trump become president. And yeah, they're going to wait till the last... I'm telling you, they're going to wait till the last day. They're going to wait till the... And Obama is a Muslim, and when he destroys America, guess what? He's going to be a hero all over the Islamic world. He's also going to be Vladimir Putin's hero, and Kim Jong-un's hero, and the Ayatollah's hero, and also, FYI, Obama actually is working with the Russians and has been working with the Russians for a long time. He's like he's like a filthy dog. Every Muslim is, to me, if you really believe in Islam, you're a filthy dog. And everything they say about, you know, Christians being the filthy dog. Well, look at Israel and compare that to, to Palestine. Which ones are the filthy dogs? You got the Palestinian side where all they do is fight among each other and kill each other and hate and call for the destruction of Israel. And then you got all of Iraq and Syria and all the way through Egypt, Libya, all the way across through Morocco, all the way down to Somalia. It's all a big desert wasteland. Even if you go all the way to Saudi Arabia, everybody says, oh, Saudi Arabia is a beautiful country, you know, compared to like the other ones because... All they have is oil wealth. They don't have any... They haven't innovated anything. They don't invent anything. They're wicked too. And if it wasn't for their oil wealth, all of Saudi Arabia, all of Yemen, uh, the Emirates, that would all be a desert wasteland with Muslims suicide bombing themselves. So... Yeah, the world of Islam is a bunch of filthy Islamic filthy dogs. And so is Obama. Obama is nothing but a filthy dog of a Muslim. Muhammad himself was a filthy, wicked dog. And see, the problem with Islam is back when Muhammad was around, you could actually... Muhammad's actual economic method worked back then. If you needed money, if you needed anything, find a small village... Go in there, ransack the place, tell everybody they either have to convert to Islam and bow to you, and or just take all you want from them. So as long as there was places to conquest, places to go and loot and steal, Muhammad had a really great economic plan for all Muslims. But what happens when you rape and pillage everybody in your region? You end up with Iraq and Syria the way it is today. Somalia the way it is today. Mogadishu. And now look what they're doing to, to Europe. They're destroying Europe. And so France is going to be the next place to become a desert, wasteland, filthy, Islamic, gross, nasty place to live. You know, just like Afghanistan, just like Pakistan. Dirty streets, dirty roads having to use pack animals and mules, going up to homes that don't even have plumbing or made out of rock. I'm just saying, they're primitive. So Muhammad's economic plan for survival basically was based on conquering other people and taking their stuff and then moving on to another place to conquer and take. But once they conquer and take everything, the only thing that's going to be left is a bunch of militant Muslims fighting each other and killing each other. I'm just saying, and, you know, uh, Obama is such a self-centered little baby. I'm going to say this. Obama is a big pussy. And Trump, basically Trump fired Obama, and he's proving to the world that, that America could be great again. Except for Obama is such a big baby, he doesn't want to give up being president. Wee, 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 you big baby. And he's going to end up, for a few years... For, he's only going to have like three or four years. By the time, see, his time of, of taking control started around the time of Charlie Hebdo, around the time of, uh, if you want to know when the actual last seven years began, and I'm telling you right now, the last seven years of human history began 
somewhere around. Okay, now it has something to do with ISIS, the beheading of James Foley, and the beginning of uh, Darren Wilson, and the beginning of Black Lives Matter in the United States, and Charlie Ebdo. Somewhere in between when Black Lives Matter started, somewhere in between where we first saw ISIS rise up and behead James Foley, to somewhere around the time where uh, the Charlie Ebdo shootings happened, and or somewhere around the time of uh, Darren Wilson shooting uh, that filthy dog Muslim bitch, whatever, Michael Brown. So from that time, that's when the, the last seven years began. So Obama's just killing himself. Okay, he doesn't realize that. He thinks he's going to rule. The, he'll rule the world for maybe a, a year and a half, two years. The Bible even says... 1,260 days, and the two witnesses will prophesy for that length of time, and then they'll be put to death, and three and a half days later, God's going to come back and smash every single last one of them, and completely take over this world, and those of us who are in the Lord, who remain faithful, refuse the mark of the beast, and those of us who die for our faith, will be resurrected for eternal glory with Jesus forever, and we will rule and reign with him forever. We win. And when you're put to death for your faith, and you stand firm in your faith, guess what? You win. And they will see you again. The Bible says those whom they have pierced, that they'll see. The, in other words, the very people who put you to death, you're going to reappear to them when Jesus returns with his armies. And you're going to personally be able to slap around the very people and te mostly terrify them. People disagree with me? You don't think so? What do you think those armies are that come back with Jesus? After the two witnesses are put to death. The two witnesses are put to death. They're in the ground. They're, they're dead for three and a half days. Then they're re resurrected. Sometime very soon, right after the two witnesses are resurrected, Jesus comes back with his army and over, overthrows the whole earth. And takes over, rules and reigns from Jerusalem. From that time, God will miraculously heal the earth. Okay, Droughts will cease. Terrible earthquakes will cease. And there's going to be a time where plants just grow and whatever remainder inhabitants of the earth are there, however that works, whatever God ends up doing with that, everything's going to be prosperous and people will live to be in old age and there will be a time of actual genuine peace. So, Obama is going to be destroyed very shortly, you know, three years after, literally before 2020, let's just say 2023. And I'll just say it's around, I think it's closer to the end of 2021. So what I'm saying is the tribulation period began somewhere in around the time that Darren Wilson had his confrontation with Michael Brown. Now, everything's about to go really fast now. You might look at the world right now and say, oh no, Donald Trump's going to be president and he's going to make America great again. And he could, and we already see the evidence of that in the economy. And it just proves Obama's a dummy. But he's going to still want to become the hero of Islam. So just remember, when he destroys America and makes war with the saints and overcomes the saints, it's just going to make him more popular all over the world. <coughs> <clears throat> the problem is, once all once God removes all the Christians, and once all God's people are put to one, they're put to death for their faith, and there's a day coming when God will say, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And when God says that, anybody who dies after that point is a tribulation saint and a martyr. Anyone who survives and is raptured after that point is a tribulation saint. So if you survive to the point where God says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, that makes you a tribulation saint, and you're written of in the Bible where it says, where John, when one of the 24 elders says to John, Who are these? And John says, Sir, you know. And, and, he, and the, one of the 24 elders says to John, 
These are them that came out of the great tribulation. Not your regular tribulation, but your great tribulation. So if you hold forth in, in this world until God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, and at that time you're either put to death for your faith, or you stand firm in your faith until the rapture, there you go. You're written of in, in God's word. Now, after the rapture, 144,000 are left behind, and there is 1,260 days left Okay, now as far as exact days, I don't know for sure. All I know is the first 1,260 days, and there's a second 1,260 days. And I believe that that revolves around the 70th birthday of Israel. So if you take the, the exact day of the 70th birthday of Israel and back up 1,260 days, you end up with the day that Darren Wilson shot Michael Brown. And if you take that day and go forward, you end up at like 2021, September 2021. Which God, well, which after that point, there it, nobody on the face of the planet right now has more than seven years. Let me just say it that way. And Obama's a big crybaby. Wah. Trump just proved that he that that it is true that you've destroyed America and that yeah well you got to see it as this Obama did what he set out to do especially in his second term and uh, I'm pretty sure Osama bin Laden would still be alive if he had been discovered in 2012 after Obama had been reelected and I believe Obama only went after Osama bin Laden in order to gain a second term and then it, during his second term we all we see that Obama killed Ambassador Stevens, Chris Kyle, Chief Justice Scalia and anyone else even I'll even say this Joe Biden's son was murdered by some sort of Russian and, it, and Obama's behind all of this Okay, Obama and Putin are like this, no matter what you see on the... When they get in private secret meetings, and they can finally get together and just talk one-on-one -on -one with their interpreters, you have no idea what they say and what kind of winks they give each other. Same with China. Obama invited the, guy, the uh, Jinping from China here to... United States, they went and toured the Northwest. And what was that all about? That was basically Obama saying to China, come, let me show you the land. Let's try not to destroy it. Let's see if we can take this over. Let's try not to nuke the Pacific Northwest. Let's try to keep all those areas where there's large, you know, BLM land and, and large uh, national forests. Let's try to preserve that. So when they do attack, when there is a nuclear strike, they're going to actually be very careful about environment. They're going to try to limit it as much as they can. But what they can't do is control what the United States does. And the United States is going to choose a bunch of targets. They better choose targets in Iran, Russia, China, Turkey, and Canada. You say Canada? Dude, Canada, bro. I'm sorry, Trudeau is... is love brothers with Obama. Trudeau's basically already bent over to Obama and got on his knees before Obama. And I'm just saying, they've already bent over for each other. Especially Trudeau. He's just like, oh, yes, sir, whatever you say. You know, he's a, he, he's just doing what he can to survive. He wants to be one of the elite. At the end of this thing, after thermonuclear war, these are the people who are going to for sure survive. They've probably got five years worth of uh, food storage and can live in an underground bunker for literally years. All of these leaders, Kim Jong-un, Putin, Obama, all of the leaders of these nations, they know they're going to survive thermonuclear war. They don't know what the aftermath is going to be and the environmental effects, and they don't know how many of their family members and loved ones are going to die from radiation poisoning. Which it will happen because they're going to reap what they sow. They're going to have to go through great sorrows too. And they're going to have to go through the time of darkness that's written of in the Bible and all the plagues that are written of in the Bible. 
So even Obama and Putin are going to come under attack of the scorpions that have the sting of the locusts that have a sting of a scorpion as written of in God's word. <coughs> but I'm not worried about it. God already showed me anybody tries to touch me before my time to die, they're going to die first. They're going to be burned with fire. Something's going to happen to prevent them. Car accident, sudden plague, sudden cancer, just sudden death, fall off a cliff, whatever. Get bit by a shark out in the ocean. Get dragged under, fall off the boat, whatever. Anybody who tries to harm me, bring it. Bring it. You'll end up dead before me. And when it's my time to go, guess what? God's going to give me the grace and the power that I'll just willingly say, okay, it's my time then. And that needs to be, that's true for everybody who loves God and who's truly going to stand firm in your faith and you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're not a foolish virgin. Now, the foolish virgins might sit here and say the same thing. Oh, I'm under God's protection. I'm under... Well, they never really put God first. So when it really comes time for the Holy Spirit to give them the power to stand firm in their faith, that's when their oil's going to run dry. So those of you who really put God first and really gave and really obeyed God and everything, and when you look back at your life, you see history of obedience. There's been many times when I obeyed God to my own pain, to my own frustration and, and fear. I mean, there's been times when God told me to give everything I have away, walk away from where I was living with nothing but the clothes I was wearing. And at the time, it didn't make sense. But now it's the end days. I see I'm going to probably have to do it again. And I've already done it. Well, each time was slightly different, but I've done it at least five times in my life where I just basically walked away from everything and just started over. So, and sometimes it was really difficult, but I was always in the middle of it. I was always so filled with the Holy Spirit. It was so worth it. So, basically, Obama's a big crybaby. He's a filthy dog Muslim. He's going to watch this video and say, we're going to kill this guy. Go ahead and bring it, because Jesus is Lord, and you will not escape from his wrath. Just saying. So, and I'm not going to do anything. I'm unarmed. If you find me, I'll probably have a, probably, honestly, if I have anything in my hand, it'll be a metal detector, and I'll be searching for gold, so I can go get one last bite of food from the few people in the neighborhood who will feed somebody who doesn't have the mark. Or, maybe I'll be in Canada, hiding in a basement somewhere. Or, maybe I'll go to Mexico. Donde? A donde? Problem is, I don't speak Spanish. Fluently. But I speak it well enough that I could disappear in any third world country that Spanish speaking. Anyway, I'm just going to obey God. Like I said, Muhammad was a wicked, filthy dog. His economic model doesn't work today. Proof is that American Christians and Jews have dominated the world, dominated over Islam. Where's the Islamic iPhone? Where's the Islamic invention that c compares to the internet or flight or anything? They don't do anything. They barely even, they don't even build good AK-47s. Even, I mean, you go to buy an AK-47 and you see the one that's $300 and there's other ones that are $1,000 and $800 and $1,500 AK-47s. Why is that one right there so cheap? And they'll show it to you. Well, you notice how the barrel is bent? Yeah, this is brand new from the Afghani factory. Brand new AK-47 from Afghanistan is basically a bent barrel piece of junk. So, what else do they make? Soccer balls? I'm just saying, even China had to steal our technology. Even Russia's had to steal our tech. They don't build a single thing that they invented. Most of the technology that was invented was actually invented, <laughs> that <laughs> was stolen from the Germans during World War II, and since then, Americans and Jews innovating and building and creating. Where's the Islamic, where's the Russian, where's the Chinese Tesla? 
Where's the Islamic, where's the Chinese internet? Other than stealing it from us? From the United States where it's Christians and Jews? I'm just saying. So they're like, the whole world is like a big, especially the world of Islam, is they're like a big bunch of parasites who they don't know how to, they're too dumb to figure things out themselves. So they see what Israel has and they want that. Let's go kill them and take what they have. And they see what we have in America. And their only idea is, don't replicate that. Don't try to do what they do. Instead, they say, let's kill them and take it. See, they hate the West. They hate Americans, but they all want a Toyota truck. They hate the West. They hate Americans, but they all want an iPhone. And they all want a, a really well-built American-made machine gun. I'm just saying. The Muslims are stupid. They're all dumb. That's why they're the ones who are driving taxis and working as basic employees everywhere. You don't see very you don't see any real Muslims at the top of the CEOs uh you know building corporations. You don't see Muslims working as engineers. I'm just saying and those who do they're definitely not the Muslims from uh like Mogadishu. I'm just saying Islam is wickedness. You can take that, you can throw it, you can do whatever you want with that. Come get me. If you want to kill me, come get me. You're going to trip and fall on your own knife and slit your own throat if it's not my time. So bring it. And like I said, Islam is the abomination that causes desolation. The United States has become an abomination. And so basically... Obama is going to destroy the United States for his own personal purposes. But at the end of it, he nobody nobody will have more than a few years left to rule and reign. And even according to uh, the Islamic tradition, when the Mahdi comes, he only reigns for seven years. I'm just saying. And if your seven years has already started, guess what? You got less than seven years. 